Hello students, we shall learn now about inquiry training model. We usually use the term enquiry and enquiry also includes questions, but this is inquiry. So, we are going to learn about it. This model also belongs to information processing family. Now, what is this term inquiry? Let us see. Inquiry includes questions. It is a series of questions. We usually ask many questions to know something. If we consider house of knowledge, we use different type of questions. For example, what it is? What is it made up of? How it happens? Where are we going? Where something is kept? When did it happen? When will something happen? Why is it so? What is the reason? Who did it? Who is that person? So, we use different kinds of questions. Now, Rudyard Kipling, he has written a nice verse on this questions or use of questions. He says, I keep six honest serving men. They taught me all I know. Their names are what and why and who, where and when and how. So, in this particular poem, he is giving importance of asking questions. Whatever we know, we obtain that knowledge through asking questions. But now, we are not considering here getting general knowledge. We are thinking of learning, learning specific topics. So, even that learning takes place through inquiry, through questions. Now, this inquiry, it is a phase between confusion and the complete understanding. What is this process? Let us see. Usually, when we see something confusing or perplexing, we are confused. We do not know about it. But at the same time, when something is perplexing, confusing, we become curious about it and several questions arise in our mind. Usually, everybody thinks of many questions, but some times we do not ask those questions. There are several barriers of communication. We usually think whether the people around will laugh at me, will they tease, is my question correct, am I using that question properly. So, all these are communication barriers, social barriers, but if we give chance to our students, to learners to ask those questions, then there is a path to get those answers. They can ask questions to anybody, to a person, to elderly person, to his parents, to the teacher. Sometimes we can ask questions to internet. Now, that is at our disposal. We can ask questions to the books, to encyclopedia or we can perform some experiments and get answers. So, after asking, there are several ways to get the answers and while getting answer, we learn something. So, we can say that, that perplexing situation and learning, there is a path which is definitely dealing with inquiry, asking questions and getting answers. Richard Suchman has given theory about use of inquiry for learning. Richard Suchman was himself a scientist, physics was his main subject and in his way of teaching, he realized that 
if the students are exposed to certain perplexing situations, they become curious, they start asking questions and if you formally train them how to make this inquiry, then they learn better. So, Richard Suchman, he put forth the theory and his theory is used for developing this inquiry training model. Now, what is this inquiry? Inquiry involves questions, but not just stray questions. It is a series of questions based on each other to get to the solution, to the solution of the problem or explanation of that perplexing situation. Now, for this definitely the person should be kept in perplexing situation and that is why Richard Suchman suggests to use discrepant events. Suchman suggests to use discrepant events. They are perplexing situations, confusing situations or some sort of paradox. Now, once such situations are presented to the learners, it creates confusion in the minds of the learners and hence number of questions arise in their minds and through asking these questions, they learn how to get to the solution or how to find out the correct explanation of this perplexing situation. So, these discrepant events are important. Now, what are these discrepant events? Let us see one example. Suppose a teacher takes two beakers, they are of same size, same shape, he puts water through different sources, he shows two eggs which are boiled and he keeps them in those two beakers. One egg it floats and one sinks immediately. How does it happen? If the beakers are same, if the boiled eggs are of same size, shape, they should show the same characteristic. Either both of them should sink or both of them should float, but this did not happen. One floated and one sank. Why did it happen? So, immediately the students or the learners start thinking, if other things are same, there must be some reason. Sometimes they may ask whether one egg is boiled and one is not. At this time, the teacher says, okay, come forward, observe the eggs. So, the solution does not lie in the eggs what else? So, then the students start thinking of the liquid which is put. Then they start asking questions etcetera, etcetera and they get to the solution. So, this was one example of discrepant event. Even there may be other situations, even if it is not possible to give demonstration of discrepant event, the teacher can just describe orally he can prepare a story out of it. Say for example, there were seeds given to both the children and both of them, they tried to sow the seeds, they put water, the same type of soil was there, etcetera, etcetera. But one grew and the plant was seen and the other seeds, they were not growing why did it happen? So, again the students will start thinking. So, in this way discrepant events can be shown with the help of pictures, with the help of videos, with the help of just narration or you can prepare the case study and give the student as reading material. Only thing is there should be some paradox, some striking things that in one situation usually it is normal situation, 
and in other situation something different, something paradoxical. So, once the discrepant event is presented, the students have to find reason for these discrepant events by asking series of questions. Now, in this inquiry training model, the learning becomes fun because all the children are curious. Once we are struck with the problem, then immediately several questions come to our mind and the students are very curious, they are eager to know about that particular problem, the solution of the problem and they become motivated. So, they may show several reactions, oh how interesting it is, some may say how is it possible, I do not know. Sometimes the student may think, I think I can find out. So, in this way every child is motivated to know about that solution and that is why they are eager to learn and that leads to better learning. Now, in this inquiry students have to ask questions, series of questions, but there are certain rules. Let us see all the rules one by one. The first rule is questions should be such that they have only yes or no type of answers. Now, you must be wondering why this particular rule is there. This is because if the students ask what solution or what liquid is put in those beakers, the teacher will have to give the correct answer. But instead of that, the students are supposed to generate hypothesis and they have to just test the hypothesis through questions and that is why this particular rule is important that the question should be such frame that they have only yes or no type of answers. Second is statements will not be accepted. So, in the beginning if the student start giving statements that means he is not putting hypothesis, he is just giving his judgment, but unless he is very sure about the solution, he should not give the statement. Yes, in the end after series of questions, if the student is very sure about the solution, then he can give the statement, not in the beginning. There should be no restriction on the sequence of questions because spontaneity is important and that is why once you pose the problem to the group, the student can ask in any sequence. Then there is no restriction on number of questions. The teacher should not say that ok, you have to find the answer in 10 questions, 20 questions, no. The students can ask as many questions as they want because we are training them to make inquiry and that is why that restriction, that time bound thing that is not our aim. Then also there can be some activity, experiment, of course it depends upon the nature of the problem, but especially in the in case of problems in science in or geography, the students can be invited to come forward, observe, measure, do some activity, do some experiment for testing the hypothesis because this is all for developing scientific attitude, scientific thinking. And besides that, this is group activity and that is why discussion also is allowed. It is not individual thing. Again, scientific attitude is important and that is why if the student wants to discuss with fellow student, yes, that is allowed, that is okay. So, now you will understand that in this inquiry training, the teacher poses the problem, he presents that discrepant event and the students have to ask questions, do experiment, measure, observe, discuss. So, in no way the students remain passive listeners, they become active learners and once 
the students are active learners, they are definitely going to learn and memorize the things. The second thing, as we mentioned, the restriction of framing the questions in such way that only yes or no type of answers are given. This is because the students are required to generate hypothesis and test the hypothesis. And this is most important condition that the teacher also should remind. Now, when the discrepant event is presented, the students will start asking many questions and they are supposed to ask questions. Before coming to the conclusion, they should gain maximum possible information about that particular event or object displayed. So, the questions could be of many type. What are they? The students can ask questions about the persons involved or the object, all the properties of the object like shape, size, etc., etc. They can also ask questions about the actual event, actual situation, how did it happen, why did it happen, etc., etc. But of course, not in this way that what is it, why, they have to again think about the hypothesis, generate hypothesis and just frame the questions in such a way that they will get answers. They will either accept the hypothesis or reject the hypothesis on the basis of answers given by the teacher. Now here, as we have seen, after the discrepant event is presented, the students ask series of questions. All these questions are to be noted down, maybe on the paper or on the board. So, on the basis of that, the students also will know what was the answer to the first question and they can reframe the question, they can generate some different questions, etcetera. But this model is for training the students to make inquiry. This is inquiry training model and that is why all those questions generated by the students and noted down by the teacher are to be analyzed in the end. How can we analyze? There can be different criteria. First is number of questions asked in proper format. Sometimes the students spontaneously may ask what and when and how type of questions, but again the teacher has to make them realize, he should remind them that they should ask questions in proper format, in expected format. But of course, those questions are to be noted down. So, in the end, the teacher can explain the students that, okay, these many questions were in proper format and these were not. So that in the next inquiry or in the next case, the student will minimize other unacceptable type of questions and they will start asking the questions in the proper format. Secondly, number of hypotheses generated by the group. So, how many different hypotheses were generated? Because anyway, this particular training is for developing scientific attitude and that is why this criteria of analyzing the questions is important. Again, number of relevant and irrelevant questions. Now, what are irrelevant questions? The questions which are formed on the objects or information which is very obvious. See for example, are these eggs? <laughs> of course, in that discrepant event there were eggs. Are they boiled? The teacher has told them that they are boiled, but still the, if the students are asking, that is irrelevant. So, also you have to note down all those questions, but in the end you have to categorize them into relevant and irrelevant questions. And besides that, which were productive questions? Which questions are called productive? Which definitely lead the student 
to the solution of the problem or explanation of the discrepant event. So, in all these ways the questions are to be analyzed and this analysis is specially important for training the students how to make good inquiry. Now, this inquiry training, when will it be successful? There are certain criteria for that. The teacher has to remember all these things, then only the inquiry training will be successful. What is it? First is selection of proper discrepant event. So, according to age of the students, according to their previous knowledge, according to their thinking power, the teacher has to create discrepant event. The same discrepant event cannot be useful for fifth standard and standard students. So, that is important. Again, that event should be relevant to the subject under consideration, the topic under consideration. So, selection of proper discrepant event that is important. There should be really discrepancy, so that the students are puzzled and they will start thinking. Second is conducive environment. Conducive means the student should be very comfortable. They should be eager to ask questions. So, there should not be any restriction or the student should not have any fear in their mind for asking the questions. Besides that, there should be constant encouragement. Sometimes it happens that after one or two questions, the students start thinking that, oh, this is beyond my capacity, we cannot think more, they want immediate solution. But at this time, the teacher's role is important. The teacher should encourage them to generate many questions. And lastly, the managerial role of teacher. The teacher should prepare discrepant event and present it. But besides that, the teacher has to just encourage them. He should note down what are the questions, but he should not guide them that okay, you should ask this question, he should not suggest anything because that part should be left on the learners. They are supposed to generate many questions. So, for that all the efforts, supporting efforts are to be done by the teacher and he is not supposed to give ready made answers to the solution. Now, one may think that in during this enquiry process, if it happens that the students are not asking proper questions or they are not coming to the solution, will we say that inquiry training was not successful? Of course, it is. So, in inquiry training, inquiry process is important and not finding answer to the problem. So, how many questions are asked by the students? How many different hypotheses the students are able to generate? That is most important. That thinking process is important and not the, the product of it. Sometimes it may happen that till end the students may not be able to find the solution. It is ok. You should not discourage the students and even you yourself as teacher should not be discouraged. This may happen. The main emphasis is the process, developing thinking process, training the students to make inquiry. Secondly, participation of maximum students is important. So, maximum students in the group should be given chance or opportunity to ask questions. Otherwise, sometimes it happens that one or two questions, students, they are very bright, they will take initiative and start asking questions and come to the solution and others just remain passive. But that is not the objective of this particular model. All the students should participate. And that is why maximum students should ask questions, the teacher should see to it that different students are given opportunity to ask questions. Even if some student who is very shy, who does not speak in the class and 
he asks the questions which is actually asked by different student in a different in different words, but still that participation is important and that is why that should be encouraged by the teacher. In inquiry training, more number of questions should be asked by the students. They should not just ask one or two questions and immediately come to the solution. And that is why for making it sure that my hypothesis is correct, they should ask as many questions as they can generate. So, that is important and besides that there should be some thought experiments. We use this word experiment in science and this model is for developing scientific attitude, scientific thinking and that is why that thought experiment not the actual experiment, but asking questions in the words if something happens then what? Say for example, if instead of boiled eggs, I take raw egg, then will I see the same situation? If I replace the liquid in this bowl or in this beaker, replace it with oil, will it show the same results? So, these are thought experiments. So, students should be allowed and encouraged to generate such thought experiments. So, in one situation if one or two such questions are asked by the students, then you have to emphasize at the time of analysis that these were very good questions, these are thought experiments and scientists think like that. So, for the next time in the next ID training session, the student will start asking such questions. So, we have seen very interesting model because it deals with discrepant event. It is a really good exercise for teacher also to find out or create discrepant event, present it to the students, hold on for conclusion, he should not be tempted to give the solution immediately and just encourage all the students or learners to generate hypothesis, test hypothesis and once the clue is obtained for solution, then the teacher may explain the complete solution. But besides that, remember that analysis of questions part that is most important because we are not here just to get solution to the problem. Important thing is inquiry training and that is why that analysis of questions that is also helpful for developing scientific attitude. Thank you.